My first guest tonight, Jack Canfield, says she's one of the best interviewers on the planet. Oh, my goodness. That says a lot. Her name is Raven, the talk show Maven, and she's known by many as the queen of interview marketing and conversion. And as a child, she dreamt of being on radio. However, her broadcasting journey did not begin until the age of 55. That tells you you can do anything. And it's never too late. While sitting in her ICU by her mom's bedside. And she's here, guys, to do a fireside chat right now. Raven, the hey there. <laughs> How are you doing? I am doing peachy king, and I mean that seriously. Uh, when I look at this time last year and now, I, I gotta say, I am peachy king. <laughs> now, you look like you out of space somewhere. I love that background. Where oh, you thank, from? You. thank you. Oh, uh, inquiring minds wants to know huh? uh, <laughs> from your local backdrop company. <laughs> I'm saying, Translation that got it at Walmart for $24.99. Go by again. Right? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, just a little screenshot. You know, we launched our uh, Raven International Broadcast Media Empire website this year. So this is supposed to represent Empire. <laughs> okay. Empire. Interesting yeah. story about how you got started. And yeah. I'm pretty sure people oftentimes ask you about. Oh, you wanted to be a radio personality as a kid, but you didn't get started till you were 55. Yeah. What was that journey like for you? Ooh, it was, um, as a kid, it was exciting because I always felt like Casper, the friendly ghost. Yeah, you, I don't know, you're a little bit younger than me, so probably a lot younger than me. I don't know if you remember Casper. Do you remember Casper? Raven, right, I look young, but I, I got the Benjamin button, so, you know. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, so I really, really um, resonated with Casper because many times I felt like I couldn't get into the in crowd. And, and you know, my parents had a chain of restaurants, so they were always too busy, not just for me, but for all of me and my siblings. But I was the youngest one. So I was ignored, mis misunderstood, you know, unheard. People just did not listen to me. Everybody was so busy. And so I always noticed when I listened to WJMO, I was from Cleveland, Ohio, and that was the station back then. Mm -hmm. I got excited. I would run around the house with my brush upside down, pretend like I had a mic and acting like I was spinning songs like the DJ. And I started sneaking down there between the age of 13 and, and 16. I snuck down there quite a bit. In fact, so much so I became a junior disc jockey on Saturdays as I got older. But anyway, long story short, that got me excited. I wanted to be on the radio and I knew it and from the age of 13. But, you know, something called life happenings just started going on. And that dream, that big, big dream shrunk until mm. mother went into the hospital and I was 55 years old. And and that's when I knew that, um, you know, if it was meant to be, it's up to me and mother was going to need money. I felt like she was going to be okay, but I jumped on the phone on a conference call and heard a guy by the name of Alex Mendozian say the quickest way to become an expert is to interview experts and that there was this real cool thing called podcasting. And all you had to do, Finch, was jump on a free conference call and ask the question, zip it, ask the next question, zip it, you know, and of course have a guest that you're asking questions to. And mm -hmm. there was this thing called podcasting. So if you recorded your conversation with an author or a speaker or an expert or influencer in your niche, that you in return would become an expert too. And right then I created my, my uh, show, designed it, drafted, Googled it, because I lived in a hospital ICU unit where my mother slept. I was on their computers and I taught myself. That was February 6, 2006. April 23rd, 2006, I launched my first show from the kitchen table. And I'm proud to say I just celebrated last week, April 23rd, 15 years of being doing podcasting and broadcasting. 15 long years, man. 15 years. I am proud to say I'm 70, turned 70 April 12th, and so it's been 15 years. Okay. And along that journey, I'm pretty sure you've seen some ups and you've experienced some downs. Um, yes. For people who may be thinking, because, you know, I hear this often when I, in conversation with people, no matter what the medium is, people mm -hmm. always think 
hey, it's too late for me to do X, Y, or Z. And what would you say to someone who's thinking that right now, they're sitting on the fence and they're saying, I really want to do something, whether it be radio, whether it be television, oh, no matter what it is. Yeah. And they're saying, hey, I think I'm too old to start. What would you say to them right now? I would say put all that aside and uh, just do it. And my motto or mantra is don't wait to be great, do it now. Okay. Um, because if nothing else, the pandemic has showed us how precious life is. Mm -hmm. So you can't keep putting off tomorrow what you can do today. And by that, I mean, you already have everything inside of you. I already had the gift to gab inside of me. You know, it was mm -hmm. just a 13-year-old kid was bouncing out. And I tell people my 13-year-old dream found me in the hospital. So your dream, no matter what age mm -hmm. that you begin to develop that dream, it's it's waiting. It's waiting yeah. for pop. It wants you to unleash them, unleash the greatness within. Right. Tony Robbins said that, and that is so true. Yeah. I always tell people, uh, dreams are forever until you decide to give up and stop dreaming. Now, that's not to say that any and everything you want to do, you can do it at a certain age. If you're yeah. over 55, you're not going to be in the NBA. So let's yeah. let's talk realistic when it comes to it our dreams. Realistic. But you can coach, maybe, or you, you can, can coach. You know, yeah, you that's can something else you can do. Mm -hmm. Right. That's something that you can do in an arena or in a genre, whether or not it was as a player or as a person in the front. And with things like radio, podcasting, it doesn't have an age limit of when you can start or finish. Yeah. You know, so I, I think people oftentimes. Why do you think people believe the misnomer that it's too late for them? What causes that in people, you think? I think, it, number one, they really believe that people in their life had told them, you know, you're too old or it's never going to mm -hmm. happen or you're not cute enough. You're not strong enough. You're not good enough. This is just a hobby. You know, you need to get a real job. Those are the things we hear mm -hmm. growing up. You know, um, I will say, though. The, the young uh, young adults now, the children, the teenagers, the young adults now are hearing a lot more positive messages than I heard grow, than I did growing up. Mm -hmm. OK, because there's so many young millionaires right. that are just getting out. I mean, look at the, the owner of Facebook and all those. They these guys started young, you know. Right. And so I think we hear more positive messages when I was growing up in the 50s. You know, um, it was, you know, was, I was born in the 50s. So when I was really starting to get, you know, into my teens, I guess it was in the 60s and then 70s and 80s and all that. You know, it was unusual for black people to even own businesses, you know, mm. and it was even more so harder for women to come up. So, you know, you we all have these different barriers that that we psychologically think will get in our way. And there are times and depending on you know, where you grew up and how you grew up, those things really do happen that they get in your way. And what mm -hmm. happens is your self-esteem starts to dwindling down and you start to believe as Brian, uh, let me see, Zig Ziglar used to call it that stinking thinking. You start stinking to believe thinking, that. Yeah. And you start to even go further than believe it, since you start to embrace it, you know, and you're like, I'm holding on to this. But there was something that I remember in grade school that we learned. I don't know if you remember this. It said, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Mm. And it's funny that that did not resonate with me or register with me mentally until I heard Alex say that the quickest way to become an expert is to interview experts. You mm. did not need an FCC license. So that was no longer my excuse because I was always fearful of tests. You didn't need any fancy equipment. You just needed a free conference call line and a person to interview on there, record it and put it on this platform and millions of people would hear you. And mm -hmm. I remember saying, did he say hear? Remember, I felt like Casper. So he's right. talking about somebody could hear me. And so just from me changing my life in 15 years, I went from feeling like Casper being overlooked, misunderstood, uh, people not listening to me as I grew up. I started, you know, doing mischievous things to get attention. It seems mm -hmm. like I, no matter how hard I worked uh, at work in the corporate world, you know, I was passed over for, you know, mm -hmm. promotions and things and, and would never get that recognition. And then one day, a couple of years ago, I got an email when I was in Hawaii saying, you've been nominated for the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. Barack Obama will be leaving office in January. We need to know if you're accepted. 
and we need some information from you so that uh, you could possibly get this award. So I went from feeling like Casper to receiving uh, 2016 Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award uh, signed by Barack Obama. And mm. I was in my 60s, you know, so 67 years old, you know, 68 years old, somewhere around there. And, mm. and here, you know, how my life just totally changed from doing this one thing, podcasting yeah. and interviewing. <laughs> That's my service to the world. Right. And, and it's it sounds one of those things where you look at it as you're just having conversations with people, you know, and yeah. In having conversations, you're able to transform lives, you're able to impact people, you're able to educate people, encourage people, empower people. And it's a wonderful thing. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love podcasting. I came from radio in Atlanta, Georgia, 12 years ago, and um, I was wow. so off the scene for the last probably eight, nine years. And, um, you know, getting back on the air and talking to people is so refreshing and invigorating for you you know and yeah. for me it, it really doesn't matter about whether you're seen or not it's about the impact that you make uh to the people that you uh, are able to encounter and i love yeah. it so yeah, yeah. well I, I agree you know um you are servicing this is the service that we mm. bring we all have different ways that we service the world and um, I look at broadcasting and, you know, interviewing the same way. And you mm. talk about, you know, how we inspire people and how it changes people's lives. But it starts with changing our lives. I tell people, yes, you can't interview the Les Browns, the Jack Canfields, the Lisa Nichols, all these great people. And some of it not rub off of you. So for me, it was more offense. You're absolutely right. It was therapy for me because I was emotionally abused. My parents were good parents, but that was back in the day when it was okay to whip your butt. Okay. And they would pick up anything. So all that damaged me. So interviewing all the experts that I've interviewed, uh, you know, from celebrities like Lou Gossett Jr. to, you know, some of my favorite icons like Lisa Sasevich and, and Les Brown and, and, you know, Brendan Bouchard. And none of them ever asked me how many listeners. This is a surprising thing. And this is mm. the thing I teach people. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. What sold them, and I'm sure what sells you in getting great guests, is your energy, your passion, and your authenticity, and you just being you, and your hunger to make a change. And I say people like us make a change mm -hmm. by you know, servicing the world one interview at a time, bringing their heroes and sheroes to them um, and where they can talk about the things that concerns them, you know, because uh, I'm sure you do the same thing. You ask your listeners, what would you like to know from this person? And mm -hmm. so now they really feel like they're, they're part of what you're doing, part of your interview and part of your stories. That's true. And, and, and again, you know, it comes from, I, I believe being authentic with people, you know, mm -hmm. for me, I, I treat everybody the same. Doesn't matter if you're a celebrity or a homeless guy. Yeah, yeah. Everybody get the same treatment from me um, yeah. because I view people the same way, the human being. So that's how I approach the scenario. Uh, it's never about what they can do for me or what I can do for them. It's just simply about us interacting as human beings. So, there you, you know, go. no, no one feels slighted over the other or a favorite one over the other. I treat everybody the same way. So, yeah. You know. And they can feel when you're not, if you look at celebrities, one of the things they they don't they don't want anybody that's going to make them just feel like, oh, boy, this is a crazed fan. They don't want that because they're real people. They mm. get dressed the same way we get dressed. They have problems and issues, too. They just excelled in what they're doing, just like you excel in, a, in being a, a host. I excel in being a host. People excel in being coaches. We all excel in that natural gift that we are meant to be. And so we are, are we equal. We just have different traits and skills and things we do. Yep. All right. So, so when it comes to starting something and seeing it through, I mm -hmm. mean, we, we can say you've done that, having started something at later at a later stage in life, mm -hmm. and you've seen it through for fifteen years. Mm -hmm. What would you say has been a few of the catalyst for you being able to do that because i know as a podcaster or as a personality some of the difficulties that that you face and yeah. so 
Uh, what, what's, <laughs> what's some of the things that have helped you uh, stay afloat and, and keep moving to see it through and be here 15 years? Mm, that's a great question. The biggest challenge that I had early on was mom being rushed back and forth into operations and stuff. We didn't even know if, many times if she was going to make it. And remember, um, I taught myself. So there was a lot of doubts there. You know, can I mm. do this? You know, am I ready for this? Uh, should I be doing this while mom's sick? You know, there's so many other concerns. My sister and I were literally almost in a in, in a fight at the hospital because she was like, why are you doing this? We don't even know if mom's going to make it. You need to focus on mom. And everything in me kept saying that this was more than I could see right now. You know, you ever hear that you can't see the forest for the trees type thing, you know, so I knew it was bigger and it was so much on my gut. The other thing was, you know, I had to really and I still do embrace um, technology, you mm. know, because technology I mean, it's sure gone from free conference call, though free conference call is still there. But now, you know, my husband, who's a Grammy Award mixing engineer, he always says, boy, you're getting to know this stuff better than me as far as this broadcasting, because I'm late at night. You know, I'm Googling, OK, what is this new thing? What is Clubhouse? How can I work it? You know, what is this? What is right. that? What is StreamYard? So I'm constantly learning. I'm a lifelong learner. And I think to really be skilled at your art, at your trade, at your passion, you have to stay in the game. You cannot be on the sidelines you know, um, watching it. You can't lean on books. You know, I'm the type of person that like to walk to walk, talk to talk. I want to experience what my clients are experiencing. Like you mm. just said to me, you know, by being, you know, on the air that there are challenges and it's right. one challenge is technology. The other challenge is things go wrong all the time. I remember interviewing Mark Victor Hansen on Blab and things shut down twice, you know, and you mm. got to be on it. You got to be ready to go. You got to bounce back in there and laugh it off and get right back into action. My host, I have 35 hosts and 20 of them are part of our profitable podcaster agents. And they have seen me sail forward over and over again. And you know what they tell me, Miss Raven, I when you when that happens to you, I'm feeling for you because I mm. know how you want things to go. But let me tell you, that's the best inspiration you give me because I never see you break down, even though right. I'd be breaking down. Trust me, as soon as that all <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know, like But They're seeing me selling forward. They're seeing me laugh the situation off and handling it. Handle it, handle it. Remember back in the day, I forget what that was. But they say, handle it, handle it. You know, you got to handle it. You got to be on. And you know, you mentioned that you know, you're on terrestrial radio, right? Yes, I was. Yes. Well, I had experience of being on KLAV, WARL, and CN, CNN and CBS radio. And I came from podcasting. Mm. So the best lesson that I got in um, getting past challenges and just being in the moment and acting fast was being on terrestrial radio. Because right. it's not like podcast right at all. You yeah. are on air and anything happens if the doggone ceiling happens, you can fall down. You got to deal with it, right? You know, yeah. and get the heck out the way. But then when you come back on the air and say, wow, can you believe that? And you notice people that are really live on air, they have the best transitions, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah, they are on it. And that that really helped me a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I definitely remember things happening in the studio. I mean, when you're... One of the great things I love about now is we I have a smaller team now. When I was on radio, you got producers, assistants, and all kind of people that was yeah. coming in and out. They handed you papers. Man, yeah. it was chaotic at times. But yeah. I I love being in the moment and most of it I love interacting with the people. Uh yeah. I think that's the thing that's different with for me that I've learned in podcasting versus radio is the immediate interaction you get a chance to get. With yeah, the, you know, we got we had call ins, you know, we had people in the chat rooms, uh, people there at the station. Yeah, yeah I yep. miss that. But that's why I think, and you know, I'd love to get your opinion, but I know that's how I feel about being on Clubhouse, you know, uh, and that we are able to have interaction with the audience there and they're able, you know, to uh, ask questions and stuff. It's like almost the closest thing to live 
on air radio that I've experienced in the virtual world. So I really yeah. like, I mean, we do have Zoom and of course StreamYard, mm -hmm. but I'm really, I don't know, it's just something about that platform that gives me more of the feel of radio. Oh, yes, because we're not true. seeing people other than their pictures too. Yeah, and, and 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 I mean it's voice activated only, so yeah, you yeah. get a chance to interact one on one directly or a group of people. Uh, yeah, that's a that's one of the greatest things about uh, Clubhouse is yeah. being able to do. It. And you know now everybody's uh, duplicating that because Twitter oh, has yeah. Twitter Spaces, Facebook has yeah, something, some of everything. Uh, and I'm hoping Hayes. Clubhouse don't mess it up and start adding all this other Twitter and you know all that stuff is too much. <laughs> Well, you know, in, in business, you, you got to grow. I mean, yeah, you know, you the, the, the old thing is you either in the way or on the way. So, so, you know, you got to you have to adapt and adjust, uh, especially when you come out the gate like Clubhouse did. You came out smoking. They and, came out smoking. Yeah. And they now, did everything right. And it was the timing. Notice that, you uh -huh. know, they came out smoking during a freaking pandemic. Right. Yep. And it was like so needed. I mean. You know, we are cut off from, you know, hugging people and interacting with people. And then along comes this app. And I kept getting messages about it, but I ignored it until um, I joined December of 2020. But I didn't actually get on it till about the second week. I'm part of Steve Osher's uh, club pod leaders. Mm. So, you know, he kind of pushed us out there. And I, because for me, I was like, oh my God, you know, here I go learning again, <laughs> you know, you know, how long am I going to stay up and learn this? And then just one experience of it and actually talking to people. And even though I host a lot of rooms, I also love to just be a listener and go into the private groups it has. And I tell you, Finch, um, I've heard some heartbreaking stories. I know you mm -hmm. have to. I've heard, uh, I've met some remarkable people, you being one of them. I've collaborated with many people and I've got a lot of clients into our profitable podcaster agency and our network. And so mm. it's been all good. And so I say Facebook and Twitter spaces and all of them, they got some work ahead of them because it's something um, that they've done that I don't think anybody else can truly duplicate the experience that we're all feeling and they came at a time that was much needed. Right. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone? Um, the thing that one of the things you've learned in the last year about yourself that someone could utilize right now to help them scale, climb or clear whatever fence they're sitting on. Behind your fear is strength. Nah. Behind your fear is strength and you can be on Unstoppable if you act on your strength and you let the fear go. And the reason I said that, um, when we heard about the pandemic in March, I just got back from Steve Ocher's New Media Summit. And um, the, all I heard on the news was, you know, you know, if you're if you're a senior citizen, stay home. We're going to take care of the set, you know, the, the younger mm -hmm. ones. You guys just if you get the cold or if you get <laughs> COVID, just just sweat it off. And I was like, are they kidding? They're telling senior citizens to not come in. And I really didn't think I would ever see my 70th birthday. And last year, I was just trying to get to the 69th birthday. I was in so much fear, I couldn't sleep, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband and I were looking at We Are the World, the making of We Are the World on um, uh, one of the Netflix or one of those mm -hmm. channels on cable. And my husband was part of that. He was one of the producers on that. And he was sharing some of the behind the scenes with me. And all of a sudden, Finch, I got up and I wrote on the tablet, um, Broadcasters Unite, Lift Up the World. Mm -hmm. And so the next day I called, um, I put out an email to some people and I said, like, look, I'm inspired to do something that's similar to We Are the World. And it's called Broadcasters Unite, Lift Up the World. And we are going to ask people all over the world to send in five to 15 minute inspiration videos mm. that they could share what they were doing this time to lift people up. We didn't want to get into politics or, or we didn't want to interview about the deaths and about none of that. It was all to lift up the world. And so we did that for one day. We got 75 videos to come in. We're going to do it again this year. 
And uh, we did it on Facebook Live and ran it for 24 um, seven. The uh, broadcasters unite, lift up the world. And I'm a, a channel developer for Roku, Amazon Fire, where we develop channels for, for our clients. And so we created the broadcasters unite, uh, lift up the world channel on Roku and Amazon Fire. So, and that came from fear. Mm. And oh. also what I discovered is during that time, when you tap into your strength, you'd be surprised at the things you did, you can do. So I started making a list of, okay, what can I do to keep myself busy and moving forward instead of stuck in fear? Uh, once the Broadcasters Unite was over, what we did is we decided we were gonna launch two agencies. So we launched one for, for podcasters called a Profitable Podcasters that help amateur podcasters make professional income and we take them through a whole system. And then also we created one for the podcasters guests called Beyond the Interview Agency. So that's what happened during this pandemic. We were able to really tap into our strength and move forward. That's awesome. That is awesome. Now, if people want to connect with you uh, and, you know, you know, you got some podcasters or some aspiring podcasters, how, mm -hmm. how can they do so? They can, uh, first of all, reach out on me on Instagram. It's Talk Show Maven. Just Talk Show Maven. So Instagram.com forward slash Talk Show Maven. Or you can go to my website and click on Contact Us at Raven International Media Empire. Well, Raven, I so thank you for being on uh, Off the Fence. Uh, yeah, I know, you're coming I'm, on my show. Yeah, I'm, I'm, of May. I had to take my husband to get a procedure yesterday. So I apologize for that. But I'm looking forward to. Uh, flipping the script so to speak <laughs> yeah yeah uh i'm looking forward to that as well and that's one of the things about doing this is time flies when you're having great conversation and yeah. you, you wish you could talk all day but you can't but you can't and i get it and thank you for having me here to your listeners and viewers thank you so much for watching my story and i just want to en encourage you to don't wait to be great do it now and don't hold on to your dreams anymore. It's time for you to unleash your greatness, like Tony Robbins says, and make those dreams happen. Show you right. Show you right. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you again, Raven. We will talk to you soon. Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Thanks for joining us where it always feels good.